at the bath. <laughs> Don't worry about it, bro. This is North East Boxing Blows. With, I am your host, Francis Crows. Today I have joining me, Delroy Spencer. Delroy is having a, a very extensive press, a boxing career. He's had um, 85 amateur fights. He, he got the finals of schoolboys, junior years and the senior years. Um, got the semi finals of the boys' clubs. Box for England, reached the ABA senior ABA final twice in a row before attending professional, where he had a 176 fight career, which is phenomenal to be on Jen. Seen the final about 153 times. How are you doing, Dara? Are you okay, mate? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Thanks for having me on, man. Oh, mate, it's a pleasure. You're an absolute warrior of the sport. Do you want to go back to your, your childhood, Dara, and how it started for you? Pardon? Say again. Do you want to go back to your childhood there, Ryan? How, how like boxing starts? Right? How are you going to like boxing? Okay, right. Sorry. Yeah. Um. Well. Well. I wasn't really interested in boxing. You know, it was um. It was after just just before I left school, and I had a friend who uh, went to a gym, the Plek Amateur Boxing Club, and um. So he offered me to go play, so I just went with him, and um. Uh, saying about a couple of weeks i jumped in the ring like sparring and that like and quickly i found out that i could i could move and and that like you know i, I was a good mover and so it just started from there really and then i carried on uh, uh, carried on training and then i got medical then and i just started boxing so top me top me for your amateur career how old were you when you had made your debut when the amateurs um i was how old was i um i was about 16 15 16. yeah can you remember about about it? Were you nervous or did you like what did you did get the boxing for did you, did, did you have um, ambitions when you're an amateur did you want to do stuff say it again Say again. Like, obviously, you made your debut as sixteen-year-old, because um, yeah. you went like you you went, they went into boxing when you as a kid. But what were your ambitions once you had your first fight? Um, I don't know. You know, I just I just wanted to just carry on training and uh, and and just and just box. Um, it was um, I don't know. It was just uh, something for myself, man. That motivated me because, like, I used to go to church. My parents used to take me to church and that, like, and I didn't like it. So uh, I left church, and then I just started started boxing. And but, like, the motivation—I didn't really have any motivation. It was just I just wanted to just do the sport, you know. I seen it on telly, and I watched Mami Dali and people like that, like. So I just I just went into it. It was a good sport, man. I liked the challenge as well, the competition. So yeah, that's 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 that was my motivation really. Who was the no, best? Nobody really motivated me or anything oh, so like that. It was just something I've done for myself. Pardon? You boxed for England and you am I boxed for England, Dory? Oh, okay. Yeah, I boxed for England when I was in England. Pardon? Say it again. Say again, mate. I, did, I didn't really hear. Sorry, the line's a bit bad. I know the signals go bad for some reason. How old, so yeah, what was well, you, yeah. how did you get like, you get your England call up? How old were you? Were you on oh, campus? okay, yeah. Um, well, I won. Um, I went to the finals in the in the schoolboys, and then I went to the finals in the juniors, and then just after that. Um, uh, well, when I went to, the, uh, I think he was senior when I was about seventeen. And I got the call up uh, for to go to to in uh, Wales. It was England against Wales uh, one Friday night. I, I I left my training job and uh, I went on, packed my bag, and uh, jumped in the car and, and we went up with my trainer and that like. So yeah, uh, it was good experience. It was all right for me, man. It, it, it was nice. I lost really like to a, a kid that. called Kevin McCarthy. Pardon? Say again. 
How many England fights did you have, though, right? Oh, uh, England fight, just the one. How, just many, the how one. many England fights did you have? England fight. Uh, oh, Box for England, on the squad, just yeah. the one. Oh, um, I can't well. remember them days. I can't remember. I can't remember. Those, uh, I think there was 12 of us, 13 of us. We all travelled down to Wales. So, what was, uh, what was it? Uh, Who did you run into on your senior year final when you lost two years in a row? Um, Danny Costello. Who did you run into your senior year final, Dowie? Pardon? How did Say the fight go like? Oh, uh, at, the, at the senior ABAs. The Wi Fi is just playing. I lost to uh, Danny yeah. Costello. <laughs> Uh, that was 95 and 96. Uh, he was a good boxer, man. He was a good fighter. Uh, but he was just that I wasn't really experienced enough. He was he boxed, he boxed for the England squad. Sorry, I've just come out of the bath. <laughs> I was sweating. Um, yeah, um, he, he boxed for the England squad, and he was a good, good England amateur. Um, so, you know, you just lack of experience. He was the... It was the first time I'd been to the to the ABAs, um, so so you know I didn't really have much experience of, of you know boxing at high level, you know. So uh, that's why, and I got stopped as well. I got stopped in ninety five and ninety six. Uh, I got stopped in the second round in ninety five, and I got stopped uh, in the third round in ninety six. One of them things, you know. It just it was just lack of experience. And plus, Danny Costello, he was in the England squad, and he was, was the he, top amateur. What was, what was he doing? He was just on a different level. Do you think you weren't ready for like take your No, I wasn't even ready. You know, I didn't have any sparring, and I wasn't the best trainer as an amateur. You know what I mean? I wasn't the best trainer. So, but but you know, I just I just went for it. I think I had like two weeks training, if that, um, and so off I went over. And I think it's a Birmingham NIA, and uh, yeah. I just I, I went in there and I just I, I just done what I could do, you know. But I mean, at the end of the day, it was a, it was a good experience for it me. Was. And then and then I went back and then I boxed, I boxed all my way to the top again. And then I met Danny Costello again. You know, he was uh, he was shit up, man. To tell the truth, and uh, he stopped me in the I think his third round. Yeah. So yeah, one of them things. It happens. It happens. So who was the best amateur you boxed? Like, the best amateur I think, was was, amateur I think it was Danny Costello. He was the best. He was the best by far. He was he was the best. I've boxed some good amateurs, but I think was he, he was the best. I've boxed. Yeah. So um, what was the, what was the reason you turned professional? Did you want to just make money, or did you have ambitions to do something? Well, to tell you the truth, I, I I was an amateur for about ten years, and so and I had a market job at the time, and um, I was gonna I was gonna I was gonna pack in training. I was I was gonna pack it all in and carry on with a market job, um, but I see them um, a guy that you that just turned pro, Ad Heldy. He used to box for Plek, uh, not for Plek for Wensbury, and he just turned pro, and uh, I seen him on the market one day, and he said to me, he said. He said, are you going to turn pro, Delroy? You know, you've had a long amateur career. Are you going to turn pro? And I said to him, I said, well, yeah, yeah I don't know. You know, and I was ifing and butting. And he said, look, we'll never be millionaires. It's always stuck in what he said. He said, we'll never be millionaires. He said, but at least we carry on our career and at least, you know, we can make some money at it, like sort of thing. And um, I said, okay, then. And then I went to the gym and then I hooked myself up with a – his manager, Dave, I think it was Dave Bradley, his name was at the time. And he hooked me up with Dave Bradley and um, I signed papers yeah. and then I started training as a pro. Mm -hmm. And I haven't looked back since. So obviously you made your Good debut life. against uh, Gwyn Evans. Your debut was against yeah, yeah. Gwyn Evans, wasn't it? Where you lost on points yeah, and you yeah. won your second one. Then obviously yeah, you must yeah, that, that, mate. That's easy. Also, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's my dancing partner. Also, <laughs> um, he was. He also he, beat Chris he, Edwards, mate, before he went on to be Prince and Commonwealth. 
Yeah, yeah. I thought Chris Edwards, I think, three times as well. Um, yeah. He, 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 um, I, I beat him first time. Well, not like your record. Then, yeah. I boxed Chris Edwards. I beat him first time. Well, we had a draw the second it's time. It's like your record. He boxed him twice. Like, Shinny Bayar. Um, there's, not, there's some names on your record. I'm Ian Napper again twice. He boxed uh, Martin Power, Chris Edwards. Yeah. Yeah. Levi Patterson, the uh, yeah. boy, you know, like Usman Ahmed and Don Brun, Brothers, Ross Burton, sure. Usman Ahmed, yeah, I boxed him twice, I think. Yeah, yeah, twice, twice I boxed him. Twice. Yeah. Scott, Scott Quigg, mate. There's some serious, some serious names in your CV. Like 176 fights to go the distance, 153 times. It's some achievement, aren't it? Yeah, it is, man. I don't know. I've done it myself. <laughs> you know, it was just them. Um, I always trained hard. You know what I mean? I know I was a journeyman, but still journeyman have to train if you want a a, a, a long gem TV career. You know what I mean? So I I just I just trained trained every day. Okay, oh. I lost some, won some, but I just carried on. You know, as a true yeah, journeyman, you've got the names of names on your CV, like. You are one of the one of the warriors of the country, mate. Like people don't understand how hard it is for like as an away fighter. Can you like can you go, yeah. give us some information like what it was like for you as an away fighter for people listening? Um it was a traveling more than anything, you know, you know, you know, because we always had to travel to other people's backyards. And um, you know, sometimes you like two, three hours traveling on the motorway. You don't know who your opponent is. You don't know what he's like. You don't know what his record's like. If it's a big punch or anything like that, um, you just have to rely on yourself, man, and your toughness as a journeyman. You know, after my twentieth fight or something like that, you you sort of toughen up. And then and then and then I had my jaw broke. I think it was two thousand. Uh, Levi Patterson, you know, I, I don't know what happened. I turned my back like sort of thing. I'd had enough because, like, I was getting over the flu and um, I wasn't ready for the fight. But, you know, money talks, man. Come on now, money talks. And so I just went in there. And uh, I think it was in the fifth round. He caught me. Bang. And uh, that was it. Broke my jaw. So, so then, then after that, after that, it sort of toughens you up, you know, because you've had the worst of it, like. So after that. I just carried on, and that sort of toughened me up to to carry on my career. One hundred and seventy six fights, you know. There's a there's a there's a lot of tough journeymen, you know, like myself. Hey, what do you fucking mean you've got some? Yeah. Man, there's not many like yourself anymore. They've all been blooded out the sport and got rid of because of the, the the boxing board that run the sport and suits so don't have a clue about the sport. You know what I mean? So fighters like you and I were we were. You were a proper gentleman, you boxed everyone, like everyone. You've seen and we mean you've got some mutual opponents, Osman Abbott, uh Jamie Conlon, uh, Kevin Satchel, Paul Butler, Lewis Browning. Um, uh, there's a few that mean you were both boxed. Like you yeah. boxed a lot, everyone of everyone made. It's like what was the biggest show? Hey, how come me and you never met in the ring, man? <laughs> Do you know what? I, I think it's because me and you were both away fighters, mate. So we're not, I only had yeah, one home show, didn't yeah. you? But you, you boxed on my home show, yeah. didn't you, Neston? You boxed John Riley. Yeah, did I? Yeah. Where, 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 uh, where was that? Middlesbrough and Eston Sports Centre Leisure Centre. Was that you boxed John Riley on it? Okay. okay. Um, boy, well, being with us, fight, when, when it was in your career, or when you fight it, it might have been one of your okay. last ones. Uh, with the yeah, you boxed John Riley with that. Let me find it. It's on your record. I'll tell you what, yeah, it was. You box ahead from you, mate. Where's the John Riley? <laughs> when did I box at Eston? You've got that on him trying to go through your CV. Are you right? There's that many names, and it's hard to even find someone. There's that many names, I suppose. I forgot more names they than I boxed, man. Are, but... yeah, I don't think they've even got it on box. Oh, yeah, John Riley, mid-2010. It was. In yeah. Eston Sports, Middlesbrough. Okay. 
Okay. So we did well that night, John. You boxed well, mate. It was a good fight. Okay. You, you did well. It was okay. a good fight, mate. Yeah. Um, what? What? Are your opponents like in the pros? What? Yeah. Like, what fight would you say you should have won? There's a few, you know. Really, it was especially the up and comers. You know what I mean? Like, like. I understand, man. You know, they sold a lot of tickets and st and stuff like that. And uh, you know, but even the, the referee know the self don they use one. And uh, after the say fourth, fifth, sixth robbery, you sort of wave it off and say forget it, sort of thing. Because at the end of the day, yeah, I've been travelling like two, two, three hours to get to a fight, and then all of a sudden you jump in the ring, and then you know you 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 you. You 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 fight, you box your heart out, and then you you know you don't get the win. Like I know we journey man still, and we don't sell tickets, but still a win is a win, man, and the referee knows it. But you know, there you go, it happens. No, you're right, man, because like the, the winners are the the winners are the made up for the to, like for the fight when we're fighting these up comes of big names before you even get in the ring. Yeah, and it doesn't matter how well you do, they're not going to give you the win. Do you know what I mean? It's it's. Like, yeah, it's like selling your soul yeah, really you you, because you know before you get there, you're beating, doesn't matter how well you do. Mm. I mean, did you used to what, sell tickets you yourself? Bullshit walks, it, yeah, for real, for real. No, I mean, I had one home fight, it was when you boxed at Rally. I only had one and I knocked yeah. the lad out in 90 seconds, I think it was, it didn't last long. But like, apart from that, I would, like box away and then like on the road every time. That's why I mean, you'll never box because you're a road fighter and I was so. Yeah, wrong fighter. We well, you know what? I love the traveling. Against the prospect, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I used to love the traveling, man. I used to love it. Um, I enjoyed fighting the best, mate. That's what I enjoyed about it. Like, actually testing yourself. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but then after a while, the traveling, it does it does get to you, man. It does get to you. I, I, I much prefer, like, if I go up the night before. It, it drains you, mate. The traveling like, drains you, doesn't it? Get you, it really does. Yeah, it, it 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 does, man. And then, like sometimes your opponent. You get, um, say, did you get your hotels paid for? Was it? It wasn't much. Um, I don't know. Every hotel used to cost, you know, the 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 the, the promoters used to pay for all that. No, did you get it paid for? You often no. It wasn't I bet it wasn't much. Like many times, you got like it paid for. And most of the time you have to come down on the day, don't you? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I thought you was the, the the hotels and that. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of the time, I used to come down on the day, but now and again, we used to, we used to stay in a hotel, um, and that was all right. That was because you can get pre prepared the night before, and then then in the morning you can have something to eat. But like sometimes, you know, if you're on the road and that, it's a bit harder, ain't it? If you go up on the day, but sometimes you finish work. And then you've got to go home, get changed, you know yourself, any, and then you know you got to wait for a lift and that, and then you've got to travel all the way up there while you're eating a sandwich or whatever you're eating, your pasta or whatever. And um, you know, sometimes I used to put you know a good three, four pound on because sometimes my opponent will be heavier than me, so you know I I take a load of stuff and get all the energy drinks down me. By the time I got to the fight, I was the same weight as him. Even if they even if that was you know three, four, five, six pound heavier, you know, and it, it's the same taking weight off as well. You know, sometimes I was be heavier to fight my opponent, and you know, you know what it's like, any they want you to take a few pound off, you know, the day before or a few ounces or whatever. And so I used to do it and then jump in the car and then travel up there, starving myself. Uh, the things we do for money, yeah. <laughs> what, what was your fight like? It's, that's what it is, mate. For us, it's a living one. Like, Joe, is I bet you yeah, a lot of times living. you had more talent than some of the prospects you were fighting, but like, unless you sound the ticket, you know, it's one money of talks, money talks, talks and boxing's on it, mate. What was your fight? Like, what was your fight like against Paul Butler? Paul Butler, uh, well, I can remember, man. He was, uh, he was, uh, I think he was a good body you puncher, man. You? Yeah, I can just about remember he was a he was a bit of a good body puncher. Um that was about yeah, it he really. And the body. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. And every time I went to back to my corner, my trainer would say to me, No, 
keep your hands up, keep your right hand up. Because, yeah, he was a good body puncher, left hook to the body. Yeah. So, yeah, he went on to the good things, didn't he, if I can remember. What did you think of him when you were in there? Did you, did you, did you see, like... Paul Butler, he's a two-weight world champion, two times world champion, and he fought for in the spirit. Was it not long ago against anywhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lost touch with boxing um, when I packed in, like, so I don't really know who's who and what anymore. So, uh, but yeah, Paul, Paul Butler, he was all right, man. He was. A, he Can you was remember your friend with uh, Kevin Satchel? Kevin Satchel, I remember the face, but I can't remember the fight, man. But I know he won. I know he won. Yeah. He was a bit of a good fighter. Can you remember your fight against Kevin Satchel? Um, yeah, yeah, I can't remember it much. But 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 what I, what I can say is most of the fighters I've boxed, man, they was all good because they was all up and comers. There was most of them was younger than me, probably all of them was, and they was energetic as well. So so you know, they was all good fighters, man. You know, I boxed experienced lads and lads that was coming up as well. But you know, all of them those good fighters. Those good fighters and good those trained well as well. You know. Against obviously you box some serious talent here, like Martin Ward, um, Jamie Condon, Satchel, Butler, Edwards. You've boxed been in with Don Broder, so you've been in with Ross Bench, you've been in the names and names, you want me around at your time. What yeah, do you reckon got you through them fights? What was like what got you through the rounds? You know, you know, um, what got me through the rounds, really, I, w I, I would say, is um, I, I trained, you know, and I was I, I was always like seventy percent fit or or over. Um, but but my 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 motivation to carry on going is, is to not get knocked out so that I could box the next week. You know what I mean? Every time I jumped in the ring, I thought to myself, well, okay, this is a living, man. I've got to make a living. It was work to me, so. You know, I sort of said to myself, "Well, I'm going to, I'm going to get through this fight and and try and make a fight of it." But sometimes, you, you know, if you make a good fight of it and you know you you handle yourself well, they'll have you back on the show. And so that that's what used to get me through the fights. Like I was thinking to myself, "Well, okay, I'm going to I'm going to go in there and make a good impression so what, and not get what, what technical like what boxing skills did you use to get through the rounds? Do you know what I mean? Like, what, what was your... Footwork. Like, I used to... For oh, me, like, I used to get... Like, I have a good guard. I used to be sure I'd go on top of them. Yeah. Was it your yeah. footwork? I've seen you box a few times. Yeah, you had a, you had a good guard. Um, but for me, it was it was footwork and just being cagey and just use my experience, what, what, what I remember, what I've always been taught, you know. Uh, but, but it was footwork mainly and, and, a, and a jab as well. Because you know, it's like being a journeyman, yeah. You don't want to get knocked about. Sometimes, if you go in there and you know you drop your hands and you try and have a war, you you you'll end up getting knocked out, man, and you know your boxing career is over. And um, so, you know, I just used to use use what I've always been taught to do: just jab, move. Same as when I was an amateur, man. You know, I, I was a decent amateur when I used to move around and 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 jab and. You know, and get and get myself through the fight. Yeah. What was the biggest show you got yourself on, Diary? The biggest show as a pro. Um yeah. Wow. I think it was Jeff Lacey. Um Joe Kalzaki and Jeff Lacey. I think that, that was a big show. That was up in... Oh, where was that? Where did you box in that card? Yeah, that was. That yeah, I boxed on that card. He was all right. I think I boxed Don, Don Broadhurst. Um, I think I did, yeah. I think he was Don Broadhurst. That was a big show. Is that show, when you boxed in was it? What was it? Yeah, did, yeah. Do you remember Don? Can you remember your fight against Don? Pardon? Say again. Can you remember your fight against Don? Um, can you remember? Can you remember much about your contest against Don Brady? Yeah, yeah, it was a can, brilliant fight. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. He was a, he was a good mover. He didn't throw many shots because he was in the England squad. He was in England star, wasn't he? And I know some of them England boys. Uh, the train to you know save your shots like so. He didn't throw many shots, but the ones that, that he did throw, he was getting through. Um, so yeah, he, he had a good fight and he won.
Uh, but I can't yeah. remember much about the rounds and you know what he threw. He made count, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What he threw counted. Yeah. So, you know. did you take many well, fights? Yeah, on the, did you take many? Like, can Tuesday. you remember taking many fights on the day itself? Um, no, nah, not no, nah, not what I can remember. No, nah. not on the day. Um, three days notice. Uh, I think I saved a couple oh, of shows. What was your shots? Not you took. I didn't. Say again. What was the shortest notice you took? Uh, the shortest notice, I think, a couple of days. Wait, what was it? Yeah. Yeah. Because you also, I can't, like, I bet you didn't even have much. Did you have much time to train during your career? Because you worked for them on you as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to work, and then I then I used to finish, and then go to the gym. Um, so so yeah, but I always said to my trainer and my manager, if um, you know, try and give me as much notice as possible, you know, so that because I didn't want to get knocked out. Because if you get knocked out, then you know, you're out for was it a month or two months, three months, something like that. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah I, I always made sure I had like, like a few off. days' notice, so yeah, that. that you, you know, wait, what's your. Overall, look at when you look back. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, because obviously you box. Yeah, what, what was your what when you look back on your career? What's your overall look on your career? Because obviously you, you you've been around, mate. You boxed absolutely everyone. You've been hard done by in the sport. You've got some decisions in your way, but not many when you should have. So what's your overall look back? Do you regret anything? Um yeah, man, I regret to not selling tickets. <laughs> I wish I I wish I had a fan base and, really um, have and any if you tried to. Yeah, I did try selling tickets man, when I first went pro. Um and I said to my manager, I said, look, if you if you if you can get me on a show in you know, a West Bromwich, which is not far from me, um, I'll sell some tickets. And so he gave me, I think, 70 odd tickets, I think. And I think I only sold about three or four. <laughs> so, you know, um, there's not much boxing fans where <laughs> around by where I live. <laughs> People ain't got much money, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's, all, free that's all. <laughs> sell free tickets, you could have hosted it in a phone box. You know yeah? what I mean? Say it again. But it's hard, yeah. it is hard. So it's free hard to you could have hosted the fight in the phone box, couldn't you? It's yeah, hard, yeah. it's hard work. So, the, the it, re battle, it really is, man. And then, and and then, and then after that... Really big. Pardon? Say it again. So, like, just, especially when you chat to sell tickets you in your career, social media wasn't really a big thing to advertise, was it? Nah, it wasn't. It wasn't really. If it was, then probably, probably I would have got to sell tickets, you know. Um, but... People wasn't really interested in boxing. Uh, it was more football and stuff like that. But like I said, people ain't got much money around by where I live. So, you know, it was hard. It was hard for them to pay. I don't know how much tickets was, 25, 30 pounds. Uh, a couple of people have come Would and watched Would you do anything like, differently for you, Tara, or you think it's tired? Uh, yeah, to tell you the truth, my friend, I would have moved away. I would have moved away when I had the chance. I, I had the chance to move to Sheffield and train at uh, Winko Bank. Prince Nazim was there, Junior Witter was there, Johnny Nelson was there. I should have moved up there and, and, you didn't and started my career. How come I didn't? Why didn't you do that? Because I ain't chatting, I ain't done it. Well, well, at the time, my daughter, she was, I think she was three, three or four. And so I wanted to stay down here with my daughter, like, you know, in, around Warsaw. Um, but then, you know, I could have got round there. You know, I could have caught the train to and from, to and from. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was one thing I could have, I, I, I regretted. I could have moved to London as well and, and started a, a career down there. But um, I didn't. I stayed around here in the Midlands. Uh, one of them things. It happens. Was it your family that kept you where you like, rooted where you are at? Yeah, I think it was my family as well. Like, But it was more my daughter than anything. You know, it's, hard say, like, it's hard when like moving away from your fighting family for um, to make a career. 
Yeah, man, it is hard. He really is. I think. Uh, and I think, I think if you're gonna move away, mate. If you're gonna move away to have a boxing career, you need to do it for you. You can have a family, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Unless your family can move with you, you know, if your family's willing to up uproot and and move with you, but it it doesn't really happen like that, does it? It's not really reality, is it? Um, so I I would have had to move move away, to, you, you know, by myself. And it's hard. It's it's lonely, isn't it? As well, like uh, as you know, staying okay. staying in hotels and stuff like that. It's really hard when you ain't got your friends around. You're all no fans or supporters. Hard man. Mm. Well, you know, it's I get through it all the time. Really man. is. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's a lonely spot. Mm. Mm. Well, did you make For, did you uh, some money out your credit card? Was all them fights worth it? Yeah. He, it got me through, you know what I mean. But plus, I was working as well, so every, everything, everything I've got around around me now and stuff, it was all paid for by boxing money, you know, all of it. Which, which I'm proud of, because you know. Did you invest well? Um, invest? Uh, not really. I wouldn't say no. I would, you know, didn't really invest well. Um, it was the money was more to 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 to. Because I didn't really, I had, a, I had a, I had, I had a missus, but I didn't really live with her. I've always lived on my own. So, so when I stayed with my missus, I was, I, I kept her flat, I kept her house, and I kept my flat as well. And so I was forking out for both, which is hard. You know like, what, right? I do things as well. I'm the same because I like to like, I like, I like, I like my own space, my own time. Do you reckon that's a lot to do with having a long boxing career, like being alone a lot? Maybe. Maybe I just I, I you know I, I work better so when I'm on my own. I think better, you know. And and when I was training I as well, like, I I think that's, training, what right? do, like, that's why you think it could be deal with the boxing career. Do you know what I mean? I'm exactly the same. Like you're alone and that into your life, aren't you? When you have a long boxing career, yeah, 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 yeah. I do like to be on my own. I mean, I work with people, obviously, and. Stuff like that, and I'll go out and see my friends. But at the end of the day, I like to shut my own door and just sit in and just chill. You know what I mean? I'm a bit of a thinker, man. I like to think as well, you know. Mm. But I never thought about my opponent. You well, know, so if, you've had if my training phone thing. Yeah. If my, if my trainer phoned me and said, look, Dell, you're fighting next week. I, you know, it got to a stage where I wouldn't even bother asking who the opponent is or his record. Because I, I don't want it on my head. You, you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to think about it. I just wanted to just pack my bag on the day and just go box and come back home. And that was me, man. I, I do like my solitude. What were your what were your thoughts in the change room? What were your thoughts in the change room? Um, story before? Did you used to get nervous even though you know the result before you go? Yeah, man. I used to get nervous. My first handful of fights, I used to get nervous, man. And... Um, but then after a while, it goes down. It it's, it sort of goes after you've had a certain amount of fights. But yeah, I did used to get nervous. Um, but I, I let me speak about it. I used to put my headphones on. I used to put my headphones on and just listen to music or talk to myself or talk to my trainer or talk to the rest of the lads that was in the dressing rooms. And um, yeah, that's that's what I used to do. Did it? Do you know after do you after your fights, obviously, because you know you're gonna lose fight get there and stuff like that, and you had 176. Did it ever like get you depressed after a fight, knowing like like doesn't matter what you do, you're not gonna get the win and stuff like that? And it's mentally hard to deal with, and it do you think like not many people can deal yeah, with mentally yeah. mentally is there, like do you know what I mean? I was on the roads getting beat when you don't Yeah, it is it is it is uh it is mentally debilitating. Um but after a while I just I just need to come out. As long as I know that I went in there and I'd, I'd done good, you know what I mean, and I'd done what I was supposed to do, and I didn't get hurt, and you know I didn't, um, I didn't get knocked out. I just need to come back and just think, ah, oh, fuck it. It's one, one of them things. Jump in the shower, get changed, go home, pocket full of money. Come on now, you know what I mean? That's business, business. Yeah. Did you get much stick off bands for it? Um, much uh, what for losing and that? Yeah, because I, I I do me on Twitter and my social media. I get a lot of, like 
shit over it. Me, but obviously I, I like now because I don't have a clue what they're talking about. But did you did you suffer yeah, from yeah. much of it? Um, yeah, a few more mates when I started losing, like, and you know, they hear about it in the you know, on the new on 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 um on TV for the you know a couple of times when I've been on Sky or I was on Eurosport once, uh, you know, I lost and this and that, and you know, and say to me, hey, can we keep losing? And I, I think, well, you know, they don't understand the journey, man. Like, and you're trying to explain to them what they see on TV, they see winners, don't they? They see championship fighters, they don't see journeymen. So, you know, you try and explain to them what a journeyman is and they haven't got a clue. And so I, I do used to get stick on. So where's the time experiment? The time. You just look at your record and the judge, you don't have a clue. Like, yeah, yeah. you should have won them fight. You don't have a clue what it takes to be a journeyman and how much you're up against it. They don't have a clue. They're just getting, they're getting the internet and be keyboard warriors, you know what I mean? But they don't have a clue what they're talking about. So yeah. you're, just wasting, you're wasting your time trying to explain yourself to them. It's a waste of time trying to talk to somebody who doesn't know about boxing as well. And that's why sometimes I keep quiet. I don't even if even if I'm around my mate's house and I'm talking about boxing, I try and keep quiet because you know everybody's an expert when it comes to boxing. They they all love the talk, don't they? But um yeah, a lot of people they don't really know about boxing, they just they just hear about it and see it and, and try and judge what they see on, on TV. But they, until they've been to a gym, no, it's, it's or been boxing. to a proper professional show, they don't know, do they? Boxing and, and think you know what you're talking about, and actually, you know what you're talking about. You know what I mean? Understanding this bar from the inside out, there's this completely different things, like you said, there, they don't understand it. Like, no, they don't, don't man, they don't. Professional any anybody yeah. on this planet who's had 176 professional fights and gone the distance 53 times deserves nothing but credit and respect. Do you know what I mean? It's an absolute warrior to do that. Yeah, respect, man. Because you know, people, you're right, you're right. People, people don't understand. And so, if I don't know how how how, um, how how I kept going because I like I didn't have any friends with me and I didn't have any fans with me. Or, or nothing like that so it was sometimes it was just me and my trainer me and my manager or sometimes me and my own and um do you know that makes you a tough person in life not only in boxing but in other things as well in your work in in your social life it makes you a tough person knowing looking back and you think well geez i used to travel on my own i've had so many fights you know i've had my jaw broke nobody was there ended up in hospital nobody was there nobody and so, you know, that toughens you up. It, it toughens you up for the tough things in life, you know, because life can be a bitch, can't it? Mate, <laughs> but, um, you've got, you know, you've if you've got, got to be the mentally strong, yes, you have to be mentally strong. have that type of life. Like you said there, uh, I used to travel, I, for most of my fights, it was just me and my coach, and sometimes it was just me. And I remember one time I traveled, got three trades of boxing in Glasgow and, and boxing the same night. And then Gary Holmes, like, and do you know what I mean? They don't have a clue what they're talking about or what you're up against as an away fighter. No, nah, they ain't got a clue. They ain't got a clue. So this is why I keep keep my mouth shut and I, I don't really say anything. You know, they'll talk about... I don't tell nobody that I used to box, even when I was boxing. People used to come to me and say, yo, are you a boxer? And I'll say, yeah. They say, oh, I've seen you in the paper or I've seen you on TV and this and that. Like, But uh, I never have to tell nobody because nobody knows about boxing today unless they've been to the gym or done it yourself. So, yeah. No, no unless you're a ticket sign, mate, or like, oh, Pat, you don't want to beat loads of nobodies. Do you know what I mean? So then get some uh, credit out of knowing you. They'll just, they just don't understand the sport, mate. Like, you deserve nothing but respect for everyone in the sport. And you've got it from proper fighters and managers. Like yeah. all the boxers and managers with respect you will know you, do you know what I mean? All the professional ones from the yeah. game. And that's more important than these idiots on the streets respecting you. Of course it is. It's it's more important and you know, people can say what they like and that like, but like I say, until you've been in the gym, you've done a bit of training and you've actually gone in gone in the ring yourself and actually done it. They don't really know, and I don't really want to talk to people who don't really know, man. You, you know, it's like the critics when this when they see the, the boxers on television, everybody's got something to say, but nobody really looks at the fights and think about what the fighters go through, the, the, the 10, 12 weeks training, the five, 10 more runs a day. They don't really know, do they? They just, they just cast the judgment and, you know, the, the, everybody, everybody's got an opinion about boxing. I think. So, I say what it is. But I don't really, I don't really, don't the right don't there's there's a lot of I don't really talk about it, you know. 
Same yeah. now when people come to my stuff on social media, there are times I don't, I don't even think reply to the comments, do you know what I mean? Because there's a waste of time, like having an argument with a brick wall sometimes, isn't it? When people don't yeah. understand the squad, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Same as football, you know, everybody's an expert in football, ain't they? <laughs> Not many people have done it, have they? Or lived their life. What, is, like, what advice would you give to any like, young person or turned professional as an away fighter? If what, sorry, say it again. So, like any young professional now turning over as an away fighter in the way corner, what advice would you give them? Yeah. What advice would I give them in the away corner? Just train hard, man. Although, you know, you might be classed as a journeyman, but still, you keep training and you turn up to the shows and the uh, you know, you put on a good show because at the end of the day, it's all about business, isn't it? And if you want to make the money, you got to keep fighting, you know, and if you're going to get knocked out every five minutes, then, you know, you're not going to be a, a good guy to go on the road. So I would, I, the advice I would say to them is uh, get yourself in the gym. A lot of people work and stuff. I used to work on that. And you might think, well, okay, I'm a journeyman and I'm, I'm not going to win very many fights. So I ain't going to train. But the thing is, you know, business is business, and if you're going to get knocked out all the time, nobody's going to have you on the shows, are they? You know, you've got to get through them rounds on your mate, no matter who you're up against, you've got to get through them rounds. That's why you get called yeah, back all the time and have good names on your CV because you got through the rounds, you're on ring, you're reliable. Yeah, 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 you're reliable, you turn up to the shows, but it all comes from, you call it all comes off the training. You've got to be, you got to still be hungry for it. I know it's hard sometimes, isn't it? Like, you know, because. When you're a journeyman, like it's hard, it's hard to be still hungry. Like, but I was hungry for the competition. Um, there was a stage where it wasn't about the money. I know, you know, business, is business, but it wasn't about the money for me. It was about, you know, I still, I still wanted to win. You know what I mean? After so many losses, so I used to go out there and try, and you know, at least try. And also, some journeyman might think, well, it's not use trying. Just get through the rounds or whatever. But I used to go out there and try. You know, and okay, if I didn't win, I didn't win, but it would be a win for me because I didn't end up horizontal. So you know, what I mean, and I could fight the next week or the next month. So yeah, that. that well, I know exactly what you mean, mate. Because like I watch you a lot of times in your career. We were on a few shows again. You did used to try, and sometimes you did used to win, but you just weren't going to get it. Like. A lot of times, with some of my fights I've won against some good names, and it wasn't ever going to accept it. But I did used to try and win, do you know what I mean? But I used to enjoy the like way reason I wanted to be in a way of fight because I used to enjoy fighting the best. I wanted to test myself against the best. If you had a good reputation, Mark, like bring it on, let's yeah. get it on. I want to see if this reputation is credible, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the way I looked yeah. at me. It wasn't like people say to me, Oh, you did it, it wasn't really for the money, it wasn't. I wanted to fight these, I want these names on the record to see what they're like, see what they're made of, and if what people say about yeah. was true or not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a there's a few fights. I went out and you know, I just I took a few shots for the you know just to see what he was like. I suppose you've done it yourself. I took a few shots, and then by halfway through the first round, I know I can have a goal or not. I, I know whether to go forward or to stay away from him, use my feet, and that. And uh, you yeah, know, half the time I used to take the shots and think, well, okay, I can take these, and so I used to go forward and you know try and have a goal. And them are the fights that you don't get. You win, but like referee don't give it you. You know, so because the, yeah. the, the decision is being made, hasn't it? Who's going to win? Do you want me to buy yourself the tickets? Made already, man. Even before you go in the ring, from you ain't sometimes from you ain't sold so many thousands worth of pounds worth of tickets. You ain't going to get the win if you've brought nothing to the table. You know what it's like, isn't it? You you're not going to get a win. So you know. You reside yourself well, to, to the way I look that's, that's reality. What I say, mate, is if you look at if you look at like a business there, right? If you're someone's coming to your business and only taking out of it, you're not gonna let them take anything, are you not gonna give them the wind, you know what I mean? It's the ones that they're putting in, that's why they look after them and keep them beating that's the one, man. Uh, winning because they're putting in the ma they're making some off the one. Nothing free in life, is it, mate? No, no, nothing is free, you're right, man, you're right. Yeah, but you but you know what? After all that, like I, you know, all said and done, I had a great career as a journeyman. You know, um, I don't regret being a journeyman. Just because I didn't sell no tickets, that don't mean I'm going to regret anything. 
you know, I, 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 I did like being a journeyman. He wasn't very nice losing all the time when you know you've seen won, it, seen it. But you box the names and names, mate. If you look at your CV, mm. it's depressing, mate. It is depressing losing. It is really, and it, people think it doesn't bother you. I mean, course it does. They get depressed. They're just humans. You know what I mean? But they the know and they're mentally strong yeah. enough to accept it is what it is. It's just like boxing politics. Yeah, yeah. It's that simple. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, there's there's journeymen and us journeymen. We we help the up and comers. And and those those are the guys that we see on TV boxing also for world titles, British titles, boxing for thousands, sometimes millions, whatever. Um, but at least but at least we can take solace knowing that they had to go through us first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did. Man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, exactly. No, it's yeah. part of their career. Do you know what I mean? You're part of their career. Anyone who's gone to do success, especially if you've gone the distance, give them a good fight. You're part of their career. Do you know what I mean? So you can be proud of that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, because because us us gentlemen, we know we know all the tricks of the trade, and it's only going to get worse from us down from from us upwards. It's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse, man. It's going to get tougher because we 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 we're tough. That's why we journey, man. And so if you can't get through us, it's not good. You're going for a world title or a British title. Oh, well, there you go. Exactly. Yeah. That's why yeah, we're like you get especially good journeyman, mate. Like, Good gentlemen like some of you and me, Peter Putley, like the good ones, you know, they can take you the distance, give you a good fight and they're tough enough and they can also like ask a few questions from you. Like they're the bloodline and sport and do you know what I mean? Like without them the sports yeah. going nowhere. And if you can't get past them, you know you're not like, gonna do anything. Not. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You need journeymen in the sport because it looks as if these days as well, like you know, the, the top pros. Nobody wants to fight each other. Nobody, nobody wants to lose the record today. You know, so that's why journeymen are there. So you know, you we, they can test each other and see who is who and what is what. You know. Do you know, like, because it looks obviously, especially like look at your career, mate. You went the distance 153 times. If you can get rid of you, if it, like you say, for instance, I'm a prospect now, I box you, now I get knocked you out, I'll stop you, mate. You know, it says more about you as a fighter, like me as a prospect, and it like. Like he's going to go on to do something really good because not like 153 times this lad's seen the distance. You know what I mean? If you can stop someone like that, it, it is really it's impressive for the prospect. Oh, you're not going fighter. Well, 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 yeah, especially if the journey man has had that many fights and and who's a cagey fighter like I used to try and be cagey. Um, and that's that was the way to get through the fights. And if you can knock somebody out like that who's a cagey fighter, it doesn't matter whether his record this and that. If if if, if a guy's tough. And he's willing to do the rounds and 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 you know be a cagey fighter. And if you knock somebody out like that, man, it says something about you. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, and it it says something about that that journeyman as well. Especially like say, okay, say if it's a ten round fight, and so it takes the prospect like eight rounds or nine rounds to knock out that journeyman. It says something about the journeyman. He could, you know, it says that that journeyman's good enough to 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 last the ten rounds. You know, and and if that prospect wants to uh, graduate from that, then he's got to do a lot better than than fighting that journeyman and beating that journeyman in in the last you know couple of rounds of a fight. So yeah, journeyman and needed like, man. You know, like like for instance. For instance, off the top of my head, like a big name prospect Campbell, and he goes a distance a lot of time, a lot of journeyman. Like you know, he's not going to do much on you. Because he's not even boxing genuine like me or you, mate. Oh, good, like, they can give you a fight. Do you know what I mean? He's boxing ones that are cabbages, really. And they're yeah. the ones that give the likes of you and me a bad name and likes of people. Yeah. Bad name. yeah. I mean, there's, there's, um, I can name a lot of journey men, man, but the, but, but, uh, another toughie. I mean, Christian Late, he's a tough journey man. He was fighting every week. Peter Buckley, he was fighting yeah, every week. Yeah, he is, mate. Uh, Anthony Anna, Brian Coleman, Arv Me Too. Shit, man, them them boys was fighting every week. Every time I went to a boxing show, I seen all them boys in the dressing rooms, and we'd say like, "Who are you fighting this week?" Tough as nails, and a lot of real, people, real fighting men they are. Yeah, the real fighting men, and so, a lot of them they used to come back in the dressing rooms with hardly a mark on them. Peter Buckley, he looks as if he went for a stroll, <laughs> come back. I, I, I hardly seen him with bruises. Same as Antoniana. 
or this in emergencies good operators man good operators and then 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 what happens all just that right is but now like sky and stuff like that's come so big they get these gentlemen in who like who are basically not joining with the cabbages you know what i mean they give like say you and others a band name don't they yeah yeah you know i've got to thank god man that i didn't i did i did turn out punch chunk or end up cabbage like and you know because we've had a lot of fights and we how much how many how many fights did you have in the end just to took my license after 35 fights after 35 okay okay i'm close i'm close no. did you ever get called in much of the board yeah i got called in once or twice twice actually um is that I got, it? the car got called in the first, first time and they they said okay we're going to put you on a three fight thing where if you lose three fights in a row we're, we're going to call you back you know whatever and so i carried on carried on and i lost i lost more than three fights and then i think on my last fight they called me in and they asked me stupid questions like how come how come i got stopped and this that and the well what am i supposed to tell them <laughs> you know no because they know a chain you know the, the the some of the midland midland geezers they they've been to errol's gym you know the 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 uh, and sinos sinos train and that like so they know we train and that like so it's a bit of a daft question you know what I'm supposed to say, we journeymen, you know. Um, they so, know, mate. Yeah. They know the games. It's like I'm surprised you only got called in a few times because I must have got called in right in 35 fights at least eight to nine times. Me, I got called in. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And if you look yeah. in the PR box, like I mean, you're getting called in for the like. I mean, I don't, I don't think we should get called in at all. I mean, what, what are we supposed to say? You know, that's going to why you're losing fights. Because I'm a journeyman. <laughs> Why don't you tell the referee to give us some of them exactly. fights that we we haven't really lost, but you know they've given it to the exactly. other guy. Why don't you have a word with them, with them referees who we'll, we'll change the rules? Because yeah. then it'll cost them. Do you know why they won't? Because right? then it'll affect their pockets, mate. Do you know what I mean? It'll cost them. So they won't. They'll have just posing calls instead. Yeah, 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 probably. So, so you know, all the decision goes to the ticket seller. But, but we've all saw where that ticket seller gets, say, British title level, and he gets knocked out, and then you don't hear of him, uh, hear of him again. So, you know, that all that was a waste of time. <laughs> you know, having all the, having all these 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 fights that 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 he didn't really win, right, but, yeah. but the referee did it to him. That's why I've I've all said, mate. Like, I'm more proud of looking at my CV, my record, than when I see some of these fights. One fifteen and all eight knockouts. Because you look at the box, they aren't even boxing yeah. like good strong journeymen. They're boxing people being knocked out twelve times or something. Ten fight, ten fights. That's you know what, what mean? I'm like, saying. I'm, I'm messing about there, but that's what it's like. Yeah, and if they've got a good promoter, the, the promoter will build them up. You know, put them in the paper in the in the boxing news. Yeah, this geezer's a prospect. This, that, and the other. And then he, he goes out and gets and gets and gets knocked out. I've been knocked out myself. Uh, you know, I've had my jaw broke, ended up in hospital. Three months later, I caught the plane to Denmark and I was I was a sparring, I got hired to, to, to as a sparring partner for uh, Stefan Norskov. He was fighting uh, do you remember Mamutov, the little flyweight, the Russian flyweight? Yeah, he was yeah. getting ready to fight him and they hired me as for, for sparring with a plate in my jaw and I still went out and, and done what I had to do. That's what I mean. That's a, a tough way of it to fight him, man. Did you get many sparring offers? Like sparring camps paid for? Yeah, yeah. I got. Um, do you remember Damien Kelly? He was a fantastic flyweight, fit as hell. Um, I I was hired to spar him. I think for two weeks in all, and then there was Peter Corshaw. I flew over to Lanzarote for I think it was a week, ten days. Uh, sparred him. Um, yeah, I've had a few sparring sessions. I've got hired for sparring a few times. I think I went to Denmark about five times to spar that Stefan Norska. Uh and then and then Did you? he got so they so you rated you, mate, and you know what I mean? If I could... Yeah, man. Well, I, well, it was business again. I got paid for it, but but it was more for training as uh, for me as well, because because I didn't get many sparring partners. There wasn't very many sparring partners around my area. So uh, when I went to Denmark. You know, I got some good sparring. It was like eight rounds every day, so, uh, five, six days a week. I think we had Sunday off. 
and then we was back in the gym again. But then I'll come back to England fit. Perfect for you. And then, when you're fighting if you like. Pardon? It's perfect preparation for you when you're going to be fighting every week against good kids. Yeah, like getting that type of sparring. It is. I had loads of sparring. I didn't really spar me. I should get the found it. Should get the get it. Do you, do you believe, like, for fighters who retire next fight, is whether it doesn't matter what level you're at, do you have any or champion? Do you reckon there's enough sport, support from boxing, George? Do you reckon you get shot away like an empty pocket? Um, well, I've been out of the, uh, the, the game for a while, so I don't really know the, the goings on. Like, but um, I've heard on uh, social media and other boxers say there's not enough support for, you know, ex boxers or ex gen men, you know boxes that have retired and stuff i've heard that there's not much support going on and what did you feel there like isn't you much support. when you retired did you feel like there's did you feel like there's like you've been like, like basically like basically just not relevant anymore so you know important job me once you retired because there is no support mate the fights get left yeah, yeah I, I think i did feel like that i think i did feel like that a bit it was um yeah 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 i did because the phone stopped ringing my trainer stopped phoning me. My manager stopped phoning me. Um, everybody to do with the boxing, it was just finished. You know, I mean, I thought, well, okay, wow. And then I hung around for a while, and then I thought, well, I'll get a proper job. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, you, you do feel as if you've been left on the shelf a bit. But like, I suppose that's boxing, ain't it? And I, you know, I don't blame them, like, because Did you managers see? train the boxers to train, have they? So you know, when. Boxing has been such a big part of your life, though, right? Did you struggle to adapt to a normal life after it? Yeah, man, I just went straight back into it, man. Yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. Um, the, the, only, the only thing I mean, went to be highway. I started, I started going out a bit more and drinking a bit more because, you know, although I was a German, I did used to drink and, and that, like, but um, when you're training for fights and that, you don't really drink, do you? But, like, um, I wasn't training anymore now. So I stopped training, stopped going to the gym, and uh, so so I started partying a bit more, <laughs> as you do. What you what you what you doing for work now, Daru? What's your life after boxing? What you do to day basis, man? Okay, well now I work for um uh, uh I work in a warehouse for a big high street company, well known company, um, and I've been doing that for the last five years. Before that, um, I had different jobs, various different jobs. Uh, but this is the longest job I've had. So yeah, you, are you I, enjoying I do, life, mate? You happy with it? Are you happy? With... Yes, man. Yes, what was man. Biggest, what would you say was your biggest part? Of your... What was your biggest part? Your biggest... career diary? Would you say what you like? Do you look back at enjoy the most of your boxing career? What I enjoyed most about my boxing career, um, people, people noticing me, you know. Forget about the money, forget about this and that. It was people noticing me, stopping me on the street and saying, hey, mate, I'm sure I've seen you on TV. Or are you such and such? I've seen your name in the paper. I think, I think that's, that's, that's what I used to like, you know, when people used to notice you for something good that you've done. What was, it, what would you say, what was the biggest moment for you in your personal career? That you, like, what was the biggest moment for you? What was your biggest, like... What you take as like your biggest thing you did in in boxing for some like obviously for me it was boxing towns Crawford's uh, undercard and for against Ricky Burns Burns in Glasgow. Uh, um, wow, I'd have to think about that one man. So hard run. I've boxed on some top shows. I've boxed on a um, uh, uh, Ricky Atten show when he boxed. Uh, was he Ben Taki? Yeah, when he boxed Ben Taki. Uh, was it Ben Tucker? Yeah, yeah, that would be mental. Um, pardon, can't have been on real experience that made boxing the pattern shows. He had some falls, yeah, really. man. Yeah, he was, he was massive. The place he was a sellout. Um, I've boxed on um, uh, the Kawasaki and um, uh, the Kawasaki show when he boxed Jeff Lacey uh, card, yeah, yeah, Jeff Lacey card. Um, shows like that, I think them, them are my big highs. Yeah. Oh, I boxed them. Um, didn't I box um I boxed who are them three brothers from East Anglia, man? It was good, all three of them. Uh, um, oh, yeah. 
Oh, I know you think that was a dinner one in the box. Yeah, Javante Davis and got stopped. Di oh, what's his name? Oh, man. It's going to fight my early, you know. Yeah, you know what I'm talking anyway. Yeah. Well, well there's freedom. Was, I know exactly. Is the Monday champion now? Um, I don't know. I haven't heard of him. I think they used to get in trouble outside outside the ring, like so. But um, they had a good career. Of, I think those three brothers. Yeah, yeah, three brothers. Of them. The Walshies. The Walshies. Yeah. That's them. One of the boxes Davis. Did he? Yeah. He got stopped by Davis. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But um, yeah, I boxed him on um, Amir Khan build, and I think it was Docklands. I think. Them, them three were good fighters, man. Good fighters. You know. But most flyweights yeah, was, really fun, and there was really fitness awesome. hell. You know, it's like running around the ring with them, man. Oh, there was fit as hell um but but yeah i mean training as long as you train and you know you keep you keep up you keep up with you know you train in and if you train three times a week man there's nothing wrong with that you can be a journeyman if you train three times a week you know uh so who would you who would you say is the best professional you boxed the best prof professional um i don't know man there was that many you know it was all good um i think one of the one of the one of the ones that went the furthest was um was ian napa another one was chris edwards uh martin power was a strong geezer i boxed him martin power and i boxed um what was his name now man he must have been about a stone no, stone and a half heavier that. than me um was it joe murray ja or jamie murray one of them did you box him yeah, yeah. Jamie, Jamie was the lighter one, wasn't he? I think John Murray boxed uh, Kevin Mitchell. Okay, yeah. He did, uh, yeah, I boxed, um, I boxed the lighter so, one. What, 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 yeah, we weighed yeah, in. I think we went to... I think that was Jamie, I think. Off the top of my head, yeah. So we yeah, yeah. He was tall, tall, tall and gangly. Um... And we weighed in on the day before. He was, I was eight stone twelve, I think, or eight stone ten. He was eight stone twelve. But on the night when I when I boxed him, I got stopped. The referee waved it off because he was physically bigger than me. He was taller than me, and he was physically bigger. And I think the referee, the referee jumped in after the second round because he just come for me, man. I was moving, bobbing and weaving, holding him, turning him, this, that, and the other. But the referee probably saw that I would have got hurt, so. He waved it off, which I was a bit pissed off about. And I had a well, goal. There's difference in fight night, mate. It's massive in there, let's be honest. So massive difference. Fighters. Yeah, man. He must have, on the night, he must have been about nine star nod. You know, but um, sometimes a journeyman can be too brave for his own good carny. So I, I went in there and uh, yeah. tried to do what I tried. Yeah, yeah. What, what was your decision to retire, Darren? I'll let you go. Pardon? What before, just before I let you go, what was your uh, your decision while you retired? Um, my decision. I don't know. I lost. I think I lost my last two or three, like that. Like, and the last the last fight I had was against. Um, oh, I, f I forgot his name, but um, I think I ended up on the floor, and then the referee jumped in. And 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 stopped it like, and I thought to myself, I think that's it, man. Because like, you know, I was getting old. It was a week before my forty fifth birthday, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna put it in there before I get hurt. Yeah, man, it was, man. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and and the opponents were getting younger, and getting bigger, you know, and stronger. And I thought to myself, well, I think this is the best time I'm gonna bow out now, before I I get hurt. I really get hurt. So that's what I've done. That was my decision to retire. I think I've done it at the right time as well. Either that or the board would have took my license off me anyway, because I had a load of losses. You know, and they would, they would have only